Welcome to Hood Politics. In this episode, I will be discussing the story of Weasel, Baby Weasel, and Tiny Weasel from neighborhood Norwalk. The facts of the case are as follows. Norwalk is a city located in the southeast region of Los Angeles County. Norwalk is home to gangs like Carmela Vario Locos, Peaceful Vario Norwalk, Orange Street Locos, Vario Norwalk, Neighborhood Norwalk, and others. Almost all of these gangs feud with each other, and these rivalries have plagued the city for decades. So this morning, detectives are investigating a shooting in Norwalk that left two people dead and another in critical condition. With a wild scene inside a gas station in Norwalk after a double shooting there, one of the victims is fighting for his life this morning. Authorities are investigating the shooting death of a man at a bus stop in Norwalk. The 41-year-old man was standing at the bus stop when a van pulled up just past him and parked. A man got out of the van, walked up to the victim, and shot him multiple times, officials said, after which the shooter fled in the van. But one of the worst rivalries is between Vario Norwalk and Neighborhood Norwalk. This rivalry goes back decades and has resulted in numerous shootings and multiple murders. In one incident on Tuesday, February 23rd, 2016, at around 4.30 p.m., a man named Christopher Bishop Sr. made his way to a 7-Eleven convenience store along with his son, 18-year-old Christopher Bishop Jr. Both men were members of Neighborhood Norwalk. Christopher Sr. went by the nickname Weasel, and Christopher Jr. went by the nickname Baby Weasel. I will be referring to Christopher Sr. as Sr. and Christopher Jr. as Jr. from here on. The 7-Eleven was located on the southwest corner of Studerbaker Road and Alondra Boulevard in rival Vadio Norwalk territory. Both men were covered in gang tattoos. Sr. had an NBD tattoo on his chin, NBD means neighborhood, as well as others on his head and neck. Jr. had tattoos on his neck and an NBD tattoo on the back of his head. Around the same time Sr. and Jr. arrived at the 7-Eleven, a car pulled up to the store. Inside of the vehicle was Louis Aguilar, Victor Roberts, Giovanni Tejada, Brian P., and Dario F. Louis, Victor, and Giovanni were members of Vario Norwalk. Dario was 14 years old and not a part of the gang itself, but a part of a tagging crew that was affiliated with the gang. The group went to the store to buy pizza and beer. Louis, Victor, and Giovanni went inside of the store while Brian and Dario stayed in the car. Shortly afterwards, Dario and Brian spotted Junior's tattoo and went inside to warn the others. Victor pointed at Senior and Junior and said, that's Weasel and Lil Weasel from neighborhood. Giovanni approached Senior and Junior and said, your neighborhood, you're not supposed to be here. Lewis threw up a Vadio Norwalk gang sign and told the man to leave. Senior and Junior refused. Lewis and Victor exited the store. Senior and Junior started passing something back and forth and Dario thought it could have been a weapon. He got scared and walked outside where he saw Lewis and Victor standing together. Dario heard Lewis tell Victor to give him that and Victor handed Lewis a gun. The two then went back inside of the store. Lewis approached Senior and Junior and showed them the handle of the gun. Senior immediately ran out of the store's emergency exit and Junior followed him a few moments later. Louis, Victor, and Dario started chasing them. Louis kicked open the emergency exit door, and the group saw Senior and Junior running away from the store. Junior tripped while trying to hop over a railing. Louis raised the gun and opened fire. Dario heard a man scream and saw Junior on his knees. Louis continued shooting and hit Junior multiple times while he was on the ground. The group then ran back to their vehicle and fled the scene. Junior was shot six times and transported to a nearby hospital. At 5.11 p.m., Christopher Bishop Jr. was pronounced dead. Five of his wounds indicated the bullet traveled from the back of his body to the front, and the sixth wound was inconclusive. The medical examiner determined that Junior died from a fatal wound to the chest. As the group drove away from the scene, Victor and Giovanni initially expressed anger at Lewis for shooting someone in broad daylight. Shortly afterwards, Giovanni received a call from the 7-Eleven cashier. The cashier told him that Junior was dead. Giovanni relayed that information to Lewis and Victor, who then shook hands with a demeanor of kudos or good job. A fight broke out inside this 7-Eleven then spilled into the parking lot where a man was shot and killed. Those suspects are still on the loose. According to his mother, Michelle, Junior was in the process of turning his life around. He had recently became the father of a baby girl. He earned his GED and had a steady job detailing cars. Michelle and Senior had broken up, so Junior spent time with his father in Norwalk and with his mother in Santa Paula, which is a city located roughly 80 miles northwest of Norwalk in Ventura County. After combing through surveillance footage and speaking to witnesses, investigators believed that they had their suspects, and in the following months, they began making arrests, and by late April, 
all of the suspects were in custody. Louis Aguilar, Victor Roberts, Giovanni Tejada, and two 15-year-old young men were all charged in connection with Junior's murder and the attempted murder of Senior, as well as gun and gang enhancement charges. Louis and Victor were placed in holding cells with paid agents. Their conversations were recorded. Victor told the agent that the police had searched his home, which he thought was related to a probation violation. He then told the agent about a time where he beat up a neighborhood Norwalk member at a swap meet. Sometime later, a police officer informed Victor that homicide detectives wanted to speak with him. After the officer left, Victor told the agent that the cops were trying to get him for something that he didn't do. Victor said his homie killed someone from neighborhood. The agent asked Victor, what did he do? He replied, nothing. It's because I was right behind. Victor denied even touching the gun. Around that point in the conversation, Victor was removed from the cell, presumably to be interviewed by detectives. When Victor returned to the cell, he continued the conversation with the agent. The agent asked Victor if he had ever touched a gun. Victor responded that he initially refused to give the gun to Lewis, but eventually did so out of the camera's view. The agent asked, if you hadn't given the gun to your homeboy, would you have shot him? Victor responded, probably. Lewis told the agent that Senior and Junior had fled out the back exit shortly after he returned to the store with the gun. Lewis chased after them, kicked the back door open, and shot Junior as he and Senior were running away. He then proceeded to shoot Junior several more times while he was on the ground. During the trial, the prosecutor played surveillance footage of the incident for the jury. The prosecution's primary witnesses were Senior and Dario. Both of them had previously given detailed recorded accounts of the incident, and those recordings were played for the jury. The prosecution also played the recordings of Lewis's and Victor's conversations with the agent for the jury. They emphasized how both men were willing participants in the murder. A detective named Ivania Farias testified as the prosecution's gang expert. She told the court about Vario Norwalk and said that she believed the murder was committed in benefit of the gang. The defense told the court that the shooting was committed in self-defense, stating that if two gang members ventured into rival gang territory, they would more than likely be armed. They also cited that Senior and Junior were seen passing something back and forth, which could have been a weapon. A man named Martin Flores testified as the defense's gang expert. He agreed that Senior and Junior could have been armed, and their defiance during a confrontation in rival gang territory supports that theory. The prosecutor refuted this being a self-defense case, stating that Lewis and Victor returned to the store and chased Senior and Junior out of the back door. Lewis then fired at the man several times as they ran away and continued to fire at Junior while he was on the ground. The prosecutor went on to say that even if Senior and Junior were armed, they weren't posing an immediate threat. The defense also spoke about Lewis's and Victor's conversation with the agent. Initially, the defense wanted the identity of the agent revealed, and he also wanted to cross-examine him during the trial. The prosecutor said it wouldn't be able to happen because that would essentially expose the agent, which could put his life in danger. The court agreed. The defense told the court that detectives intentionally made the agent look and behave like an older gangster. He went on to say that Victor was intimidated by the appearance of the agent, so he pumped himself up and exaggerated his stories to sound tougher. Ultimately, Louis Aguilar and Victor Roberts were found guilty with the murder of Christopher Bishop Jr., as well as gun and gang enhancement charges. Both men were found not guilty with the attempted murder of Christopher Bishop Sr. Giovanni Tejada was tried jointly with the Louis and Victor, but the jury couldn't reach a verdict on the murder charge, and he was found not guilty of the attempted murder. Louis Aguilar was sentenced to 50 years to life in prison. Victor Roberts was sentenced to 40 years to life in prison. On Sunday, February 17th, 2019, a 16-year-old young man named Daniel Bishop was walking through the parking lot of a CVS located on Rosecrans Avenue. Moments later, someone approached him, pulled out a gun, and opened fire. Daniel was shot and ran to the street, where he collapsed. Daniel Bishop was pronounced dead at the scene. Daniel was Christopher Sr.'s son and Christopher Jr.'s younger brother. He was also a member of Neighborhood Norwalk and went by the nickname Tiny Weasel. Just like his brother, he spent time with his mother, Michelle, in Santa Paula, and his father in Norwalk. Daniel was killed just a few weeks shy of his 17th birthday. No one has been convicted of his murder. On Monday, May 11, 2020, Christopher Bishop Sr. passed away. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Please like, comment, and subscribe.